but I will talk to you guys today about the actuators of the Tesla robot. Why is everybody talking about this? Why is this such a big deal? Hi, welcome back to the Elite Automation YouTube channel. I'm Malik, I grab your host and CEO of Elite Automation. So we deal with automation related. We build and design automation equipment, which makes us one of the strongest people to talk about the Tesla robot. To start off, what is different about the Tesla robot actuators? Well, one of the primary differences is that Tesla designed these actuators. Why did Tesla go about designing these actuators instead of just buying some type of actuator off the shelf? Now, the reason for doing this is because of optimization, right? One, they want these actuators to fit within this humanoid style robot. So if you were to buy just an actuator that was on the market, then you know, maybe the, the back of the leg or the back of the arm has to stick out much further to be able to have the, the proper length and the proper stroke of cylinder. However, if they design the actuator, then they have the ability to make it fit in a more compact space. And the other thing is mechanical advantage, right? The cylinder has to have the right speed and the right strength to perform whatever actions they want it to do. And at some point in time, they might be have multiple generations of robots or multiple variations of robots, I should say, where maybe this one can handle a heavier payload and is used more of an, in a manufacturing environment. However, the build of the robot looks more like a, a buff individual. Maybe the robot is, you know, eight feet tall and, you know, 1.5 times the width of the, the robot you're seeing right now. And the reason for doing that is so that you make you can make the actuators bigger so then that you can therefore uh, lift more of a load. So whenever they're going about designing these actuators, they're able to design them to the exact proper mechanical advantage and also fit them in a way that is as compact as possible. And so you can do some creative things. Like let's say for instance, uh, you could change the bore size of your cylinder, right? That's one of the most simple things that you can do to change the mechanical advantage of a, a cylinder. Now, another thing you could do is a double piston where you have two cylinders that are uh, side by side that actuate one singular rod or you can even do like a quadruple cylinder. And these different types of configurations of cylinders can give you different strengths. They can give you different characteristics, right? Say for instance, you could apply air or, or electricity to two of those solenoids instead of all four of those solenoids for maybe higher efficiency, right? Or if it's air. And when it comes to like cylinders on the market, the cylinders are very standardized, right? They're meant to fit particular applications and they've been designed to become even more standardized because that's what makes in the market, right? Is having standardized products that can be swapped out with one another. And that's great for, for manufacturing and great for, you know, the procurement of parts and the replacement of parts, but it's not the most optimal when it comes to having the most amount of power in the least amount of space. And this is the primary reason why Tesla is designing these cylinders. Now, the next thing about these, these cylinders or these actuators that is kind of next level is the fact that they're gonna manufacture them in-house. Now that's a pretty big deal. And I would almost even say that it's gonna be a very big challenge. There's a lot of things to, to understand as far as like the life cycle of those cylinders because you know the companies that have been making cylinders for years and years and years, they know a lot of the engineering and a lot of the techniques that are necessary to design the, the most perfect cylinder, the most longest life cylinders and, and cylinders that don't jam up and get uh, in a bind. Now, I don't think these cylinders are gonna have a lot of life cycles in the sense of how many cycles they will perform in the lifetime of the robot. Because there's a lot of cylinders that are stroking up and down, you know, 30, 30 times in a minute, right? Whereas these actuators are gonna move much slower. You know, maybe you're gonna get, you know, four, four times in a minute. And I'm just using some rough numbers, but in that instance, you would have, you know, double the amount of usage and, and life cycle of that actuator. But the fact that they're gonna build these actuators in-house gives them a huge advantage because one thing in the market that you'll definitely struggle with is, is supply chain, right? And if they're planning on mass producing these, there's like always a supply chain on some cylinder or some you know actuator and maybe eight of these 10 cylinders that you need are coming in right on time, but there's like one or two of them that are kind of holding up the entire process. Like for example, for us, like 
we use uh, power clamps in our robotic welding fixtures. And the power clamps, especially particular models, tend to be like the longest lead time thing. You know, you're looking at 10 weeks, 16 weeks for, for this power clamp. And so those are things that we have to start pre-ordering and even order and keep on inventory just to make sure that we don't have supply chain issues and, and we don't even mass produce things. We just, we produce on a, on a custom type of level, right? So when they're going to mass produce this, they need to make sure that they have control over their supply chain. And also a lot of these cylinder making companies are not used to designing and manufacturing the uh, cylinder that they're about to produce. Now, neither is Tesla, but Tesla will have the ability to take that expertise in house and completely take control of that process and learn that process, refine that process, and just make their cylinders better over time. They can design them to be more sleek, more safe. You know, as you've seen, like the, the robot is encapsulated with, with a shell, right? That makes it humanoid looking. However, if you were to remove that, and I'm sure there's gonna be like some warranty thing that says, hey, if you remove this, we're not liable. However, there are still liabilities there, right? If somebody was to remove the leg unit and somebody was to grab it, grab their hand on the on the cylinder and the cylinder was to close down on their hand and, and you know hurt them, they can design in safety features that are not in your normal cylinder inside of those humanoid robots. And then another thing to keep in mind is, you know, I've kind of really used cylinders as a, an example kind of over and over again. But there are other type of actuators on the market, such as electronic actuators, right? A, a servo driven actuator. And you know, Tesla's already been doing this with the electric motor of the Tesla vehicle. Now they'd have to make this in a smaller form factor. And, and this would be like, let's say a, a servo type of motor or uh, an induction type of motor. Now one thing that they, they're gonna also have an advantage on with the design and build of these motors, they also have a better understanding of the electrical engineering of it and also the electrical functionality of it. And when I say electrical functionality, what do I mean? You can spin a motor with a certain amount of load and you can calculate the amount of power that it takes to move that load, right? However, they've had a lot more real-time data of this being on the vehicle. And also, algorithmically, they probably have a lot more data on how to manipulate different joints, right? Like, let's say, first of all, I had an electric motor attached in, into this joint, and it was just like a one-to-one -one ratio, or maybe it wasn't a one-to-one -one ratio, and this is exactly what I'm getting at. Maybe there's some complex equation that it's, that's involved here because uh, if you've ever done any type of weightlifting, you know, whenever you are at the lowest point and you go in this region right here, the weight is a little bit lighter, then it gets heavy again here, and then it gets light again. So since the robot is a humanoid style robot, it's gonna have those same type of mechanical advantages. They can program different things into the system to uh, allow the actuator to perform at its most optimal. They can also mechanically engineer things that where there's a cam inside there maybe, the robot can move very quickly through this area, but through this area it has to move a little bit slower just to have that better mechanical advantage to be able to have that same motor. And it can also move very quickly in this area right here since there's not as much of a load. They can really play around with like the mechanical engineering and the mechanisms that are used inside the robot to optimize its, its efficiency, its strength, right? All the things that are gonna go into making this robot one of the best robots on the market. Let me know if you guys have any other feedbacks on the Tesla robot. If there's anything else you'd like to know about the Tesla robot or anything else, automation, manufacturing related. That's the things we talk about here on this channel. So hit the subscribe button if you want to learn more on these topics and we'll catch you on the next one.